The XY Advisor podcast is intended for professional financial advisors. This content is created in partnership with our sponsor, Net Wealth Investments Limited, ABN 85090 569 109, AFSL 230 975, and is limited to publicly available information. Before acting on any general advice, you should consider whether appropriate and obtain financial advice from a qualified financial advisor. XY Advisor does not hold an AFS license and does not provide any financial advice or services or endorse any general advice. If a PDS or IM exists, you should obtain a copy and review it thoroughly before making a decision. Advice Tech. As if it wasn't enough to be across TMDs, Alpha, Beta, Rule of 72 and all the other nuances of financial advice. Now, advisors are expected to be across all the technology options too. And there's so many of them. But never fear, Peter D is here. Join me each week on a journey of discovery through the software and apps on offer for advisors and advice businesses. So let's dive in, fellow advice explorers. This episode is brought to you by NetWealth, market-leading providers of technology, excellent customer support and expertise to help your wealth business thrive. Rated number one for overall satisfaction and value for money by Investment Trends and Chant West's Advised Product of the Year for the last four years, NetWealth is here to support you on your advice technology journey. See wealth differently and visit the website to learn how NetWealth can support your advice and wealth business. Hello and welcome to the XY Advice Tech Podcast. I'm Peter Diamantidis and joining me here today to deep dive into the Lonsec iRate tool is a UK import, you'll be able to tell by her accent, and someone with some serious client services experience. Thank you so much for joining me on the show, Hannah Bevan. Woo! Thanks, Peter. It's great to be here. You are very welcome. Now, super keen to dive into all things irate, but let's just get to know you a little bit before we we do that and how you use technology. Mm -hmm. So what's your most used emoji? Do you use emojis? Um, Yes, I do use emojis. Um, I think they're the pretty easy way of getting explanations across pretty quickly. So most used one is definitely going to be the thumbs up, especially in the work environment. It's easy on teams just to answer something with a thumbs up. Um, If it was more, I suppose, on my mobile, generally it's probably going to be a smiley face or the the love hearts. Or if someone else gets hold of my phone, a little one, that's probably going to be poos and unicorns. (laughs) That, that's their fun and games, isn't it? Right. Don't you love the generational difference? I actually yes. think there's also um, a cultural difference too. So I think in Australia that we use thumbs up a lot. Like that's the mate. Like it's a representation true, true, of yeah. that Aussie expression. Mm-hmm, so we've definitely. clearly indoctrinated you. I'm very happy about that. <laughs> Been here too long. <laughs> exactly, exactly. Now, how about your smartphone? If you had to delete all of the what I am betting is quite a few apps on your smartphone mm-hmm. and you could just keep three, what would you keep? Tricky one. Um, I think for me, it would definitely be something like WhatsApp, so you can keep in touch with people. So it's an easy way of again doing that. Um, probably a music app like Spotify, so you've just access to music, podcasts, and everything. So you've still got that that community that set up. And then third one for me, probably a bit different to some people, is an app called Tiny Beans. So yep. It's kind of like a curated social media platform that allows you to post pictures and milestones of your children. And you just select who it is. So with family and friends all over the world, that's that's a really important one that we all share so we can keep up to date with what all those little nieces and nephews are up to as well. So that's sort of an alternative to just having a like a WhatsApp group and everybody getting all of these posts and like all yes. of that sort of craziness. Yeah, it's, it's an app you go in when you want to have a look at it, but also it's better than the sort of Facebook, Instagram where anyone can see it as well, I guess. Yeah, okay. Tiny Bean. I like it. I've noted that down actually for some friends of mine who I'm sure could benefit from that because everybody's a bit hesitant sharing photos and comments on kids and what they're doing. You know, we're all aware that that can be a little dangerous, can't it? Yeah. Perfect. Oh, I love it when I get an idea for a new app. Thank you. You're welcome. (laughs) So let's dive in. So starting, you know, just broadly for irate, What category does that generally fall under? You know, who do you sort of compare yourselves against? What other tools would somebody be looking at as a comparison to iRate? Yep. So um, Lonsec, as probably you're aware, is is a research house investment consulting business. So iRate is the software that's housing that research and the tools to help advisors construct, manage their portfolios, assist in determining the appropriateness of products for their clients. So really, I suppose if you're going to be comparing us to somebody, you're going to be looking at the likes of Morningstar, Zenith, 
SQM Research, or the other major research houses that have their own tools and portals as well. Yeah, okay, that makes sense. And I guess what is starting to come up though as well is is these sort of more narrow tools as well, like your Ethos ESG. You know, these people are doing these really yeah. narrow filtering exactly, ways as well, yeah. right? So and exactly, that's a new depends, sort of development. It depends what you're looking for. I suppose as long as that we've got the broad spectrum, we're covering managed funds, super funds via our super ratings business. We've got ASX 200 coverage, ETFs, like listing terms, we've got the whole suite. And then you've got those more specialist ones, especially if those coming into that ethical, sustainable area as well. So they're, they're, it's the changing environment, but traditionally the bigger research houses cover all aspects. Yeah, fair enough. So I'm betting then that your normal user is either advisors or power planners in that sense for this sort of tool in financial advice. Um, you know, are there users in many, you know, advice practices that are sort of broadening the team that use the tool? Are there, you know, you're finding that there's a, a broader use as maybe people use more admin resources or even VAs or anything like that, that there's sort of a, a more training happening of other members yeah, of the team? Definitely. I think, I think I rate can apply to a number of different areas of putting in the advice practice. You're right, it'll be the advisor primarily, then the power planner back office support to get that information and research out, construct their portfolios, their recommendations. You can then have other people going and get the information. But I think also it's reaches bigger than that. You've got the licensees that are also using it for their APL management, yeah, okay. um, their research teams using it for their, you know, constructing the APL, the IC committees, things like that. So it can go up or down, scale up and down, depending on the size of the business as well. And then yep. also you've, you've got even in turning in Lonset, we've got our own research analysts and investment consulting teams using the, using our rates for their, for their, for their peer comparisons and selecting products as well. So it does have a really broad reach. So you definitely have got, you know, the IC committee aspects, APL management as well as so that those compliance aspects as well are really important that other team members in a business advice practice would use it for. Yeah. And I think it's something that we're probably not great at in financial advice is, you know, there's, layers of complexity of using a tool like iRate yeah. and but there is, are some things that somebody just with some direction and training can please go down enter this and download that you know like exactly there's some of those that, things yeah, yeah exactly some prep that. work I just, yeah I did that kind of training the other week with somebody who was sort of um looking at APL management for the IC committee so they wanted yep. to be able to get and it was teaching them how to load that APL in as a product group set up reports to come through to them automatically be alerted for the rating changes and things so all that aspect where she didn't need to be in R8 traditionally for the research aspects, but it was for her, it was a game changer for APL management and automating those processes. So it, it can be applied across so many aspects of the business, definitely. And and sort of diving down that rabbit hole, and then it's um I can see a lot of people probably use it as they need it. You know, a lot of advice, oh, right, I'm doing this, in we go, instead of potentially batching some of that and letting a team member do a whole lot of things all in one hit, set, like you say, setting up some things in there that mean you've got your main list in there already. I'm imagining that's probably something people don't set up enough. You might, guys might see and go, mm, yeah. you, you really yeah, could I'd get more organised here. I'd, I'd agree with that. I think we have, I, I rate has a number of little features like that sort of that, that seem quite simple, but if people were to set them up, it could really save them some time. And they're probably often overlooked because people get irate initially, they need to access research. They're just going in, downloading those reports, doing it when they need to. But a few, a few bit of time spent at the beginning, setting up your APL, maintaining that, setting up the alerts so you can be notified when there is a rating change straight away. You're not having to go in and check the changes, you know, and sharing that with every team members as well that are all using mm. irate with their own logins. You can share all that information. So you're all working off the same set of data. And only one person is managing it. Is it's all possible, and it's it's those little smarts that help anybody with this, any tech really be they be more effective. But you're probably all a bit guilty of not putting that time in to do it. Well, because it does require you sort of it's sort of looking above yourself, almost like bringing yourself yes. above and going, "Hold on, I've just done that twenty times in two days." <laughs> Wait a minute. <laughs> or I'm, way? I'm going in every month and downloading the same information. Hang on. I can actually schedule that report to come to me on a set day every month if I set it up once and it will come to my mailbox on a day. So the, it, it really can be that smart if if you spend that time doing it. And maybe, you know, that that's an aspect we're looking at. How can we help our clients actually be using that functionality better? How can we let them know it exists? Because, you know, there is so much in irate and mm. perhaps, you know, it's, it's communicating to you know, you could do this and you can do that. So, so that's an aspect of what we're focusing on at the moment as well for our clients to try and help them 
get irate to work smarter for them. And I think it is, it's a, it's something that does happen in advice when for lots of people, they're going to have this sort of core, call it a CRM or an advice tool that's this massive big system and they're in it all the time. And so I think you, you do become a bit more aware of, gee, I should get more training on this or on that. But some, it's interesting with things like a research tool. We're actually in and out of those a lot, mm-hmm. but I'm not sure we necessarily expend a lot of energy at doing that better. Yeah, it's probably fair. And I mean, that's why we do have that client service, that training support function there to help people. So when they are trying to do something, you know, if, if it's not working and they go, why do I keep repeating this? Is there a quicker way? They can get that training. They can get that support. We can help you set that first product group up with your APL and then you can go away and do the rest you need to do. We, we, we do have that support available to try and help people use it better. Yeah. And look, I'd encourage um, any, li- any listeners that are current users to take advantage of that. And and even to the extent that I've started to put my hand up with some tools we use for almost like revisiting the beginner training, because mm-hmm. the new beginner training talks about the new features. And I've yep. probably missed some of those, you know, so yep, it's just exactly a bit that. of a refresh. Yep, exactly <laughs> that. And they have got the same the regular webinar training program. But of course, someone who, who started, you know, the subscription five years ago, we've brought so many things in. You almost do need to go back to the beginning and have that webinar to make sure you're catching all the new features. And are you really using it to its full potential? Or are you just going in and doing what you were doing five years ago and not realise there, there's perhaps an easier, more efficient way now? Yeah, absolutely. And look, sometimes um, one of the ways we even do it is we have support staff do something like a training like that with yourself or or as yeah. a webinar. And some of it, it won't be relevant to them, but they pick up on such different detail to what yeah. we do. Yeah. <laughs> the, yeah. You know, and they instantly see efficiency, you know, and a, mm-hmm. a support or support team or admin team, they sort of, their lens is such they're going to go, wait a minute. You mean I could do that in two steps instead yeah. of 12? No, exactly. You know, that. and they're on it. Yeah, and we yeah. and exactly that we do see that. So again, we've got especially new clients coming on board. We would say, don't just do the training yourself as the advisor. Bring your team in who's going to be using it because you'll all see different aspects. And it can often start discussions within the team as they're on the call. Say, oh, hang on, if we did that, we could do that. And you can see those light bulb moments that it's actually beneficial as a, as a whole practice to be in that room in the same session. So. You can yeah. all see a bigger picture as well holistically. Yeah, and it is, it's like I say, when you're focusing on your core, you can spend a lot of time on your core tool. I think we probably do, um, you know, these parallel sort of systems that we yeah. use a lot, but they're sort of to the side. We probably do them a bit of a disservice in that sense because we don't apply nearly as much energy into A, understanding them and, and B, keeping up to date with them. Yeah, um, which is understandable as well. You know, we're, we're all guilty of, of that. We've all, <laughs> we've all got those parallel systems we use and it's, it's just unfortunately human nature and the time we've got available, isn't it? So. It is, it is. So if we've got somebody who's curious about the tool and, and they're mm-hmm. looking to sort of dive in, is there any is there any practice or advisor it's particularly good for or that you found it's not quite suited for? Is it or does it really suit across the board? I think I it really does suit across the board. I think as we we're saying, it's got it's got so many aspects. If it is just the research you want, you want to go in there and just get that, it's gonna work for you, but it's also gonna work on a far higher level and complex level if if you want it to, to help with that APL management, the compliance checking of, you know, ratings of products and things. And it can go all the way through to helping you manage your portfolios, you know, putting those portfolio comparisons, recommendations together. So it, it really, it really is quite a powerful tool. It's about how, how far you want to take it in your business and where it can support you alongside the other, obviously tools and everything you want to to use. Um, And yeah, it, there, there is a lot there. It's, there's those ninja users, I suppose, as we like to call them, that are in there with portfolio construction and they're using it for all their client portfolios, their model portfolios. They're all in there. They're building out when they've got to do the new review, a recommendation. This is where you are today. This is my new recommendation, side by side comparison. So it can be really quite powerful. And we and yeah, we see okay. that we see that feedback come through when people do start adopting and using it. It's like it's, it's they say sometimes it's a game change for their business and they're not you know, they don't want to go back to what they were doing previously in an Excel file, I guess. Yeah, absolutely. And I think um, the other thing is, uh, look, it's great, and we'll get to integration in a second, but it's great for us to go, oh, but it'd be better if it was all in together. Um, you know what, with these sort of tools, and um, I'm betting there's all sorts of wonderful graphical representations of those things and tables and all sorts of things. Yep. Um, 
screenshots work a treat, you know, like you can, <laughs> you can screenshot a graph and drag it into your SOA or your, yeah. your advice document. So I, I've um, previously got a little caught up in making sure everything feeds in when if the tool does the look and the feel of what you want and you just love it, just screenshot the outcome. Put it yeah. in the document, exactly you know, it's that. it's super easy. And, you know, a lot of our screens and those charts that are available, they can come out in a Word template, a PowerPoint template, so you can copy and paste it into your SOA easily as well. So it's not necessarily that you have to even screenshot it. You can get the export in a in a better format to bring in and, you know, Perfect. do the, do the good, good old copy and paste as well. So Yes, exactly. Well, and I, I guess that does cover sort of the integration. If, if the output can be in all these different versions, then that's probably what you're producing an advice doc in anyway. Most of them mm-hmm. um, go out into a Word document or something like yeah. that. So it's then super easy to drag in. That's exciting. Does it integrate more closely with any other tools, Iris or anything like that? Yeah, with, with Iris. So with Iris, so we've got X Plan and Midwinter, we've got the integrations there. So that's pulling through the um, ratings and the research reports product profiles. So for, I suppose more when you've got the back office Paracon support in, in those tools, trying to, you know, bring together the SOA, they can check those ratings, they can get that information on okay. the product without having to log into iRate themselves to go and get that research report. So so there's those integrations there. Um and and we are talking to other sort of um, software providers. And obviously, it's a changing market at the moment. There's new ones appearing all the time. So we're talking to them about what integrations we can do as well in, in, with other software providers as well. Yeah, okay. And so um, in terms of then materials you might have as sort of part of the total offer that might be more client-facing, I mean, I mean, I'm betting you've got market updates or, you know, those sort of things. Are any of those tailored for clients or are most of them just specifically for the advice um, the um, advisor themselves. Yeah, most of it is is for the advisor themselves. Um, there there are some elements. I suppose our job primarily is to make sure that we're helping the advisor look good in front of their clients. It's about giving mm-hmm. them the insights and the information so they can have informed, insightful conversations. So we yeah. have those market updates that are available for the advisor on a regular basis. Our strategic dynamic asset allocation views. You know what we think is happening in the market coming from our investment consulting team side as well. And then you've obviously got all the research reports. But saying that some of our market insights we do put into a sort of more client-friendly newsletter that the advisors okay. can use themselves, you know, post on the website. We have clients that do put it onto their own websites, their portals for their clients to read to give that very high level what's happened in the market's economic views as well. And then if you are in there using our portfolio construction tools, for example, you can get a client-facing portfolio report, which will give you an overview on where your portfolio is with with different, you know, you've got up to 20 different quantitative analysis, risk, return, profile, performance charts you can select to put in there to really tailor that report. And then there's customization, like being able to add a logo to those reports. So you can actually say, okay. this is my work as well. You know, this is, you know, it's branded with, with, with your advisor practice logo, which always looks good. Yeah. Okay. Fantastic. Level. All right. So there's a whole lot there. I mean, the sort of thing that, um, I can I can see happening is you might have your what I'm a, I'm betting is quite a detailed market reports there they're going to be the uh, very financy ones um, and even if they are for you know for clients they're going to be quite detailed then you know an advisor could potentially do a little quick video you know yeah. at the top of the newsletter that's their highlights of that and then exactly. provide the rest of it if for yeah. the people that want to go deep so that you're sort of covering both ends of your client base we have both ends and we do have like say a more detailed one but then sort of the monthly one is quite short and brief and then the client when we do try to keep sort of like literally two pages so it is and it is a bit more simplified so we do try to but again that advisor being able to put their own commentary around is obviously really powerful for you as well yeah absolutely absolutely so in terms of then i mean you must have loads of current users um Mm -hmm. that are in there then what do you think that people don't take advantage enough of we've covered a few things but is there anything else that you go oh i can't believe people aren't you know really utilizing this as much as um as we feel could add value to their practice yeah, I mean, obviously, I've said, touched on, there are obviously those ones that help you with APL management compliance and sort of getting those alerts. But I think another one is um, we did launch a new tool this year, products like this. Mm-hmm. And that essentially is a tool which allows you to filter um, for a like set of products on similar characteristics to a product that you've already got in a portfolio that perhaps you, can, you need to replace for a client. Yeah, it's okay. going to give you in a matter of minutes a universe of products on similar characteristics that you define to actually go, okay, this is my universe of 10 products to consider. Now, we all know that advisors were telling us that when they come to do a client review, the back office can spend so much time trying to find those light products with recommendations. This is for some people, they're saying, already taking 
an hour to hour per client review off their off their research and putting that together. So if you add that up over a course of a year, that's really going to add significant savings for any for a business to free up their staff to be doing other things as well. So the products like this tool is probably the one being a new feature as well. Obviously, we're we're really keen. We think it's got real value. We'd like to see our see our users really getting in there and trying it out. Fantastic. And I believe you've also got um, the sustainability score there now. So that's yeah. something that yeah. is coming up for all of us, whether we've yeah. got clients that are particularly greeny or, or that mm-hmm. way inclined, it's, yeah. it still gets asked, doesn't it? So exactly. that's something that's a feature as well. Definitely, definitely a big feature. And so you say we've got the sustainability score on, on products, you know, alongside the traditional rating. And then also alongside that, we built, we built in some features, I suppose, in the product search or when even using the products like this that you can say, there are particular characteristics or elements that we that advisors want to avoid, such as coal mining or something like that. So you can look at the material levels that um, the fund managers saying they have investments in, and you can say exclude products that don't have, that have that have a significant exposure to coal mining. So we're helping screen products that way for advisors, which is also really helpful in that universe space. So I think that's definitely an area where we'll see more focus and development because it's as you say it's becoming such a big focus for for the end for the end clients so advisors need that information yeah it is and i think it's great that um you know a tool like tools like yours are are starting to do that because there's sort of i can see it at two ends one is a client specifically says it and i've had that before we don't want any coal or gas you know like they're (laughs) Yeah. have some sort of vigilance about something mm-hmm. and therefore we can use a tool tool like yeah. you're, you're talking about there. I think the other end will be over time educating clients, like helping them understand what they care about because yeah. they, they probably don't know that they can. You know, they don't know mm-hmm. that they can choose those things. And so yeah. I think then there'll be some sort of almost values-based questioning that'll you know, something like a score-based thing that'll help them work that out so that then it can be applied exactly. across the and portfolio. Exactly. It's very much, you know, we're, we're still at that stage where we, we still need that data to help us come through and get yeah. that information for us, for us to give it. So at the moment, it's very much a, a materiality. Roughly, they say they don't have it, but it's still, it's, still, it's still very much a guideline at this stage. But at least we're helping filter that universe down for advisors to say when you, they do have someone going, well, maybe I don't want to think about coal mining or tobacco. What else, what, what else can I think about? Absolutely. And as a rule, um, you know, you're looking at, at what somebody currently has. So to be able to get that snapshot, you know, and then yeah. compare it against, you know, version B, uh, exactly. whatever that alternative and, is. And that product like this tool is really, is really useful for that. So you can do that. You can go, okay, I've got this product today, but we know it's got a high level of tobacco, coal mine and whatever it is. Show me mm-hmm. products that have a less, you know, have a, have a more immaterial exposure to it. It will give you that answer straight away. That's fantastic. So, yeah, that is a huge time point. saver because yeah. trying to <laughs> wade through that yeah. can be a long and torturous BDM of fund manager <laughs> exercise. Oh, yeah, I understand, yeah. So at least, <laughs> at least you've got a starting point and a short list, and, that, and that's what we're trying to enable. We're trying to give that, you know, some time-saving short list that you can then go away and do that more in-depth research on, but you're not starting with a universe of, you know, 100-plus products you've got. All right. 10 or so. Absolutely, because they're not – the list isn't getting shorter is what yeah. I've realised. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> So it's getting longer, not shorter. So, you know, anything that helps, you know, bring that down and help it sort of, like you say, create a short list, I think is powerful. Is there anything on the development path, anything coming up that you guys are working on or that you're excited about that you'll be rolling out in the tool? Um, so, so we're always, I suppose, I suppose for us, it's, it's always looking at continual incremental improvements in our rate. So we, we you know, we, we aren't looking we're always looking at what we can do whether it's a small feature a big feature as i mentioned in the last sort of 12 months we've had the new products like this tool we did major updates in terms of the ux to try and refresh that and make that a bit more intuitive people recently launched a new um portal for our managed account side of the business so all of that's sort of coming through and then the feedback is very much about working with with our clients you know what what do they see where are their pain points to make sure we're identifying bringing the right things through for them so we have a have a working group of clients that we're looking at fantastic it's coming up i think we're going to look at what we can do perhaps a bit more on the personalization customization options also mm-hmm. about as probably a bit more about educating clients about what is there so what i was just talking about those time saving tips that apl management the compliance management i think i think we've got so many great features in my rate that we, we always want to go back to helping clients use them and understand it and put that education piece together for people to really make sure they're maximizing it and then another one i'm kind of i'm interested in i think it's good to be looking at that commonality of holding style analysis across the group of products you're looking at 
or a portfolio, make sure you've got that diversification. So there's something we're looking at in that space as well, what we could do there, I think it's exciting. And then as you mentioned, you know, we've got responsible investments. That's the key one that we're keeping an eye on. And we're working very closely with the research analysts and the team that are obviously doing a lot of work in that space, seeing what they're finding and how we can bring the information they're collecting into our rate for, for advisors to use as well. So it's very much a, you know, a, across the business, what's, what's happening in so many different areas and where do we bring that all together for the advisor? Yeah, that was perfect. I think um, we're quite a few episodes in now to the Advice Tech series or the podcast and the consistent thing that stands out for me, and of course, I'm the only one that's listened to all of them as, as yet, <laughs> is none of us are using the current tool we have to its fulsome potential. Like yeah. there's so many things in the one we have already. You know, when you're tech curious like I am, then I want new ones, you know, which I think mm-hmm. is a mistake. We need to take the time to become, you know, super advanced users of the technology we have already. Yeah. Um, so, yeah, listeners, I would encourage you to reach out to Hannah and the team and really dive in, revisit what you know about the tool, get them to show you, maybe describe your process to date mm-hmm. and see if there's some things that I'm betting, Hannah, you and your team can identify, well, wait a minute, if, do you, you realise if you did this, you wouldn't need to do those extra two steps, that sort of thing, yeah. um, which can free up so much time. Exactly. And that's what we want to do. We want to make sure that people are maximising what they have already. And we're aware that we are adding features all the time because every, every every application, every, every software is constantly evolving. So people will will not necessarily take advantage of things that have come in what they, you know, over the last few years. So we really want to consolidate that for our users and for those new people coming on board as well. And then, you know, by having those conversations, we'll probably get even more ideas about what we could take those to the next step to help help that advice practice become even more efficient and, you know, have those informed conversations with their clients, you know, with our research and the recommendations they're gleaning out of our rate as well. Perfect. Is there anything else we've sort of missed that we haven't caught or or haven't covered, do you think? I Um, I think that's pretty very good, very high level. As you said, look, there is a a lot in our rate primarily. You know, we are thought of as a research tool and you're going Mm -hmm. in there and accessing the research, but there is so much more that our rate can do to help support those client conversations and build out those recommendations and help you, I suppose, as an advisor, streamline processes, simplify the demonstration of the best interest duty obligations and all those compliance obligations that advisors have had put on them in the last few years. And we know it's massive and that, that everything we're trying to build in our is to try to help along those conversations and help simplify those processes and technologies everywhere, coming and coming everywhere for advisors. There's new, there's new things, tools arriving all the time. So we get that finding the time to look at it is difficult. So my main thing I encourage you is pick up that phone, speak to us, we'll we'll do a training session with you and make sure you really are getting the value. Or if you haven't used it, there's the complimentary two-week trial, take advantage of that, get the training then. Fantastic. And look, that's the way to get neck deep in something, right, is just to to give it a whirl and to actively use, not sort of, oh, I'll play for a few minutes, have a piece of advice you're doing and actually use it and you'll you'll rapidly um, work out where the value is. Um, I think... um, I, I was uh, lucky enough to have, have a friend years ago who was a scientist and the one thing she quickly taught me was there's a difference between research and evidence of research. Yeah. And I think that is something that using tools like iRate, we can just be doing mm-hmm. research or we can pull out all the evidence of the research exactly, that we did. Yeah, yeah. And that's the difference, isn't it? That's yeah, the thing that, that, that's, that's the, the big ticket of compliance. Yeah evidence of research it's not just downloading the research report that says this product is highly recommended for my APL it's about then you could take that to the next step and you could build your portfolio for your client you can plug in their portfolio as it is today and put it next to the one you're recommending you can show why it's stronger in terms of you know it's better aligned to your risk profile it's better aligned in terms of returns or the downside yeah. deviation okay it's historic information that's shown you where those risks have been in the past and why we think we're protecting it or we're giving you where you need to be of your goals if you want to take more risks as well and the power is there in that and you've got the evidence those reports can be downloaded put put to the client file for the reviews and you've got it there so exactly you mean it's something that's you know coming up a fair bit i'm bet for out there is, you know, with interest rates doing what they're doing, Mm -hmm. um, duration and things like that with interest rates is something that you're then looking at with certain funds and to be able to show you have compared a few Mm -hmm. and can see the difference and this is the thing I was looking at, like all of that's so valuable. And I just think it's good rigor for us anyway. You know, I think that's a great – creating those structures where we consciously capture the research we did is just good practice generally, let alone – 
from a best interest perspective. And then it just helps. It just helps you have those conversations with the client. If they're asking you, okay, I'm not sure about this. You say, well, I've done that. I've looked at it and I'm comfortable that these, these, this, this portfolio where it's positioned is going to help you. And you can just come in and you can just put the portfolio into IRA and run a few of those charts and just, just be comfortable that you've done that for your own benefit. You don't have to do it just at a review time or for a new client. Yeah. You could come in at any point and do that. All right, Advice Explorers. Well, if you'd like to find out more about Lonsec and Irate, um, then those links will be in the episode show notes and take advantage of the two weeks trial. I think that'd be a great way to really check it out. Um, and we'll also include the lovely Hannah's LinkedIn details so that you can, uh, you know, g- reach out and yep. ask all sorts of questions and she can probably point you in the right direction of, of where to get um, some training uh, for your team and to learn more about the tool. Look, Hannah, thank you so much um, for, for joining us and also taking the time to really dig in into all the detail of um, the tool and a great offering for advisors. And I sort of can't wait to see what else you guys will come up with in the future. It's great. No, it's been great having you, Peter. And I look forward to saying anyone who's got any questions, just reach out. I'm always here to help and the team are here to, you know, make sure everyone's maximizing that subscription or getting that most of a trial as well. Perfect. Well, you heard that here. It's now been recorded, folks. So <laughs> feel free to reach out to Hannah. Thank you so much. Right. Thank you. So, are you a current user of Lonsec? Do you agree or disagree with, you know, what we covered and, and what we felt was some things to take a deeper look at? You know, please share any of those insights on the XY community platform as we'd all love to hear your take. Um, and, you know, any tips, any, I just discovered this, let's share them. You know, let's make sure we share them on the platform so that we can all get the benefit of your insights. In terms of my thoughts, then, I guess what I'd say is it can be often, often be really worthwhile to take a look at how you use a tool like iRate and consider what tasks you do that have to be done per client, like it's, it's unique per client and what maybe can be collated on, say, a monthly basis or even a weekly basis, you know, reviewed, collated and then put somewhere. This could be the fund reports. It could be other things. Um, we can, often end up doing the same thing over and over again for each client, downloading a similar fund report, doing like all those sort of things. So stepping back and really considering any repetition in what you're doing um, can end up delivering you some real time savers. So just have a think about that. If there's any sort of batching you can do for any of that. Similarly, much of the sort of, you know, extraction work or even data entry into a tool like this actually could initially be done by a member of the support staff, depending on how you're using the comparison tools or depending on how you're using any of those tools, then with some really good training, some, you know, videos walking through what you do, um, and then gradually revising the process with the support staff team member, then they'll really be able to get used to what you're looking for. And then, you know, they can get it to a certain point then hand over to you um, so that then, you know, you can, you can continue on from there. This is a way to get some really serious bandwidth um, out of a tool like this, separating out, separating out the entry or the collation or the tidying from the deep analysis and the insights. So, you know, we can often make the mistake that, you know, once the process reaches analysis and advice, right, that it just sits with the advisor or the power planner and it's just automatic. All elements of that sit with them, you know, but other team members have a role to play to really streamline and prepare things before you get to them. So just keep that in mind. Okie dokie. So for today's Curiosity Corner, where we build our curiosity muscle by sort of checking out a new out of left field app that I've come across, I'd love you to take a looky-loo at Text Expander. Uh, now you can find Text Expander at textexpander.com, funnily enough. Now this is to be used for anything you regularly type that can be and can be replaced by a few keystrokes, right? So basically a sentence, a paragraph, many paragraphs, or even a word can simply be replaced with a couple of letters or a backslash and a couple of letters. This could be the friendly intro you always type in an email. It could be the directions to the office you drop into an email sometimes. It could be the link with some instructions on how to make an appointment with your scheduling app. It could be a couple of paragraphs you've come you've come up with about current market conditions ready to respond if you get some queries could be the outline of a file note with the headings and prompts ready for you to just fill in as you need it how about pds links you know instead of having the full thing you could just be a little keystroke and it would type the whole thing 
This can be used in spreadsheets too. You know, is there a date you always enter or, you know, even interacting with team members, if you use an internal chat tool and there's a response you often give um, that's that's describing something or explaining something, then yet that can be keystrokes. This doesn't just apply to advisors either. You know, what about members of the admin team? Um, and in fact, admin people can, once they understand the tool and they get their heads around it, um, often they completely passed us in terms of the value they can get out of it. They do a lot of typing, they look at a lot of data entry and, and you know, filling in forms, those sort of things. And Text Expander can do a wonderful job for them. Top users of this tool can save over seven hours a week. Seriously. <laughs> so from this point on, just start looking at the things you have to type a lot. Just absorb the fact. What are the things that I'm doing that a lot with? Um, maybe it's even words you mistype a lot. Make them a shortcut so you never have to type them twice again. So I'd encourage you to check it out. Well, that's all we've got for this week. Be sure to subscribe to the podcast so you'll get your advice tech fix automatically sent to you each Friday. And if you'd like a speaker at your next event to brief your audience on the seven habits of bionic advisors and the secrets to tech-powered human-centric advice, then please reach out to me on LinkedIn forward slash Peter MD. That's P-E-I-T-A-M-D. Otherwise, I'll look forward to turning up in your earbuds next week. And remember, advice explorers, stay curious. (laughs) 